anyone watching, if you guys are watching right now, we're having a bit of technical issues, as you guys know. I know we do these all the time, but there was a recent Instagram update, and I think it's affecting our IG Live. So we're going to try one more time to get the cast of The Wild on here. Again, I apologize to Sarah and Rain and Sophia. I'm so sorry, you guys. I'm going to try this one last time, but just so you know, we think this is a known issue with Instagram. So I know you need them. I need to know about the Twilight of Adam. I have so many questions. Like, I have so many questions. Trust me when I say this. I'm going to be very upset if we can't get them on. But we're going to try one more time. And I see you guys. And if this does not work, though, please know it has nothing to do with these lovely ladies or myself or anyone else. It's just the fact that the technical people hate us. So we're going to try one more time. We're going to try one more time. You can come in here. I know, I, they went with someone else's. Sarah! Hi, it worked. Yes. <laughs> I have you, yay! <laughs> don't give up. Your fans are very much like, you better not give up on this, so I don't want you. <laughs> Hi, how are Hi. you? Hi, yeah, I'm great, thank you, how are you? I'm fabulous, so hold on, we've had a little bit of an issue with IG Live lately, they've had some stuff, but it looks like we have you. So I saw Rain a second ago, so I'm gonna try mm -hmm. one more time to see if I can get her and okay. thank you so much for joining us i'm jacqueline nice to meet you so nice to meet you too i'm i'm glad this we got the connection going hi, hi. hi. hey yay oh my yay. god we're in here thank god sorry about that yeah for some reason ig live they do these in, they do these instagram updates and it's the one thing they forget they still do and we still love doing these <sighs> so let me see if i can get sophie um I haven't seen her yet, but I'm gonna try her one more time to see if I can get her Instagram handle on there. Jen, if you're watching, um, if you wanna send her a little click, but I just added her too. But thank you ladies so much for being here. First of all, I have to say an apology. I'm gonna give you both an apology because I did not know about this show before we booked this interview. Apologies. <laughs> I didn't know about it. I'll be the first to admit it. And I watched it uh, over the weekend. I was like, oh, you know, I'll watch a couple episodes, get ready for these ladies. And I was just burning through. Like, it was so intense and just so much. And there's so many questions I want to ask you about. But Sarah Rain, I'll let one of you take the sort of lead of telling me about what the wild is and where we find you guys going into season two. So who wants to take it? Sarah, Rain? Rain, Rain, all right, you're in. Oh. Yeah, you, got the, you, got the, you got the Princess Leia buns. I feel like a story far, far away is exactly what you're here to tell us. So let's go, girl. Um, <laughs> how do I explain it without, like, ruining season one? Well, this is the thing. We're going to have to assume with folks if they're tuning in now, getting ready for season that two, and I've told them. Okay. Okay, so it doesn't okay. look like Sophie can join, so let me try her one more time, but okay. keep talking while I do that, okay? Okay, so basically, The Wilds is a show about these eight girls that got... They were on their way to a uh, vacation, so to speak, this like feminist vacation for young teen girls. And they go, plane crashes, they're stranded on an island, but little do they know it's actually a part of a social experiment. And so where we leave off in season, from season one is you see them go through that journey between present on the island, past in their lives before island, and also future post-island. And then when we go into season two, you're kind of picking up where the girls are on the island from where they leave off in season one, which is a lot of intense stuff that I don't want to, like, spoil for season yeah. uh, two. Um, but there's also some boys added to the mix as well when you leave off season one. So there's yeah. a, a band girls island as a part of the social experiment. And um, it's quite the journey. You see... Yeah. That's, the <laughs> That's the word right there. Go on, and it's... Um, yeah, it's it's a wild a wild ride. <laughs> it is a journey. And so many of you go on journeys. Sophie, I don't know what to say. She's trying to join. So if you're watching, we're trying, but it just keeps saying you're unavailable. So if maybe if not update your Instagram app, it may be out of date. That's just a little pro tip for you ladies. Anyway, uh <laughs> Sarah, I'm gonna bring it to you to tell me a bit about your character. And I say this knowing that let's just say every character in this you don't really know if who they present themselves is who they are, right? Like everybody's 
got like six stories, but let's just say, where does your character present herself when we first find her? In season two or season one? Season one, like when we first meet her and then, you know, like who is your character that is first presented? I'm trying to keep this as spoilerish less as possible. Right, I think um, when you meet Leah in season one, she's in, apart from being stranded on an island, it's like one of the most uncomfortable situations she could imagine herself in. Um, it's a group of women uh, that are very, very different. Hey, Sophia. Hey, Sophia. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yay, we I got was you. On, I was on the, th I'm so <coughs> dumb. I was on the page, the Instagram page. It was like start, about to start live, starting soon. And it never started. And I think that I just froze well, on Well, you're there. here now. That's all that matters. <laughs> and Sarah's telling us all. <laughs> I'm so sorry to interrupt. No, I'm you're perfect. Sorry, I'm Sarah. glad to see you here. Um, this is the way it was intended. And I trust me when I say your fans, would have came for me through the internet connection if all three of you were not here. I felt their tension when I was having trouble. So I'm so glad all that three of you are here. so scary. And no, you guys are glad that I could I be here to protect you in that way. <laughs> no, I should have warned y'all. We do these all the time. It's always something. Like I used to get so stressed about it, but now I'm like, we'll get it. <laughs> <laughs> like, we'll get it. It's there. Um, Sarah, go right ahead though. Keep talking about where we find Leah. Yeah, Leah, Leah's a loner. Um, she likes a book more than she likes, I think, a, a hang. And suddenly she's with all of these people that she has. I think I can speak for all the girls where they have very strong ideas of who each other are. Um, and throughout the first season, I think the audience probably has that as well. These, um, I think you, you see them as sort of surface level. And to be, to be fair, they're all 16-year-old girls who are figuring out the world and figuring out who they are and you see them in this slice of their life that is like I think very uh in a transition of uh adolescence into an uh, into adulthood and they're forced to grow up really fast um but Leah's very internal um she has deep thoughts and feelings that I think she likes to keep more with herself um and explore that in a book whether it be the one her ex uh, wrote or um, a favorite of hers um, but yeah I think her her in a in a group setting is something that is very uncomfortable and new to her and it's throughout both seasons I think you Leah and the audience realize how she communicates with other people um, how there's more strength in numbers uh, how having that personal relationship with oneself can also be fruitful and having a personal and intimate relationship with, with other people. In particular, I think with, with Fatten and Rachel, those are, are two relationships that really, uh, I think, ground Leah throughout her, the story that we explore um, and ultimately help her survive this experience on and off the island, hopefully, if we get to explore that more. Yeah, and, that's uh, off the yeah. island. I'm, There's a reason I'm why I'm at these this. comments right now. I'm <laughs> I saw you laughing. I've been laughing. looking at them. Like, so yeah. Sexual, Can I like, also just say? My lips. Sarah, <laughs> kiss my lips. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, don't look at the comments. Trust me. It's sometimes distracting. But go ahead, Rain. Like, I was going to say, our DP from season one, Ed Wild, is on. And I just oh, hi. Say, Ed. Hi, Ed. Hey, I love when the fans of up. the cruise and stuff. So shout out to him because yeah, the show looks Ed. great. Yeah. So shout out to the DP. I do have to say this too. Sophia, you're coming into this now and I want you to talk about your character, but I also, since we're already in it, how did you guys film this too? So I want you to tell us about your character, but then also how did y'all film this? Because it seems like probably the worst and best scenario. I'm sure they sent you to like a tropical locale maybe, but you don't get to enjoy it maybe as part of your <laughs> shoot. Like you're probably in a nice hotel that looks all tropical and nice, but y'all look like you're out in the middle of nowhere. So tell us about your character and what it was like filming on a deserted island, Sophia. Um, my character, Fat, and, oh, just like as a, a just general... yeah, just blank, <laughs> as blank as possible. Not all of her. She sort entire. of just doesn't really um, give any f's, and um, then like you know she finds out something about her family that's really jarring and doesn't really know how to process it and retaliates with like vengeance and anger and all this stuff and then she lives a very me 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 life and um then she ends up on the island with the girls and um goes through a whole you know 
journey of discovering how important it is to care about other people within <laughs> yourself, you know, and, and also, um, you know, vital it is. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So Vi tell vital, me about the filming. Like vital to survival. Yeah. Where did you guys film at? Was it Australia? Was it here? Where were you guys filming at for the for the outside scenes? The first season we filmed in New Zealand. And the and second season we filmed in Australia. Oh, gosh, it looks absolutely gorgeous in so many different ways. But what was the worst part about filming <laughs> all day as a shipwreck? <laughs> was it the makeup? Because you guys, it's they probably make you look different so, for everyone. They make yeah, you look the so somber. Intense. The makeup is so intense. Oh. It's and it's also uncomfortable. I loved the makeup. I loved Even the, the dry makeup. Lip. Oh, I wouldn't let them put the dry lip on me. I couldn't do it. <laughs> Girls lick it off. No, it's so bad. It tastes so bad. It's like because you're imagine poop would dry like. while you're out there. So then they yeah. have to. I was like, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I'm like, I'm doing this naturally. Yeah, <laughs> Is that I was what like, say, like, I got it. Life now. <laughs> well, that yes. brings me to you then. I mean, one thing I will say is that was what struck me when I was watching. It was just how real they wanted to make it seem like you guys were about the elements. No offense to previous shipwreck shows, but they all seem to have great eyeliner and like <laughs> so much makeup. And like they did not give y'all that. So Rain, talk to me about that aspect of it and just signing on. Did you know going that. into it? How much did you know going into it? Because the show takes so many turns, even in just the first season. Um, was that all mapped out? And then again, also for folks that haven't seen the show, because like I said, I do think this is a bit of a sleeper hit, whereas it maybe not a lot of folks like myself saw it season one, but man, this is now I think the perfect time to catch up with it. So yeah, tell us about your character and then also yeah, like, what did you know going into this? Um, well, it, je it it changed from the pilot to, like, when we actually shot. And even after I booked it, there was a few changes about what sport Rachel would actually uh, participate in because it wasn't wow. original diver. I think there was gymnast at one point, fencer at one point, so they, but then they settled on diving. Um, and then... She actually, season one, she did have, like, really bad acne, and that was a part of her story development. So I had to get, like, prosthetic acne on and things like that, um, on top of all the other crazy makeup we, we got done. Um, so, yeah, but that was a part of her story. And as uh, people kind of go on and find out, she, through season one, she has an eating disorder. So, and it honestly, whereas, like, kind of Sophia says fat and doesn't really give any Fs, Rachel gives too many. Mm. Um, you know, she kind of takes herself and the world a little too seriously to the point where it's detrimental to her health. Um, so that's kind of like the, the world of Rachel. But as far as the world of the wilds, everybody's trying to figure out what's going on as we're growing <laughs> it. Like, everybody's like, do you know this? Do you know that? Da, 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 da. But um, Amy Harris and Sarah Stryker are very, like, strategic as to who gets to know what. And we all do a really good job of that, like, in kind of um, holding on to that and figuring out what we need to know for our characters personally. And then everybody kind of, uh, it unfolds for everybody when it's time to unfold for everybody. But, um, yeah, we're all on a wild roller coaster anytime we're filming the show. <laughs> <laughs> it seems that way. It seems that way. It seems very Weirdly, much jump though, out I of the I feel like I parallel with what's going what my character is going through. Wow, really? Sorry. In, in, you have in to a, see the show to know how that's a bold in statement. In a very <laughs> unattached way. Because obviously, you know, I'm not stranded on an island. But in a way, you know, I yeah. am. No, that makes sense. No, I mean, I get... The, the one cool thing about the show that struck me immediately is it doesn't matter who you are, no matter how many different ways of humanity you kind of identify with, there's somebody that represents a part of your experience. And sometimes some of them represent parts of it that you didn't see at first. Like that's been the best part of it. For folks in the comments that are saying the ship name, I am going to acknowledge the ship name, but I'm not going to say it because not everybody knows what that means. <laughs> this is not like R plus L equals J. If I say that, people are gonna know what it means. <laughs> And this video goes up without the comments, but I see y'all, <laughs> and I know, and yes, we are all there. <laughs> we all are about it. Um, but yeah, there's so many different, I would say, archetypes to the show. Coming into to season two, what I think is very interesting is it's, it's almost big little lies in the sense that we find the folks in season one, and a lot of, I would say, 
what you would think questions of the season are answered right away. You know, these girls are on an island, you know, like that there's a social experiment being conducted without them. Yeah. And then there's just yeah. a whole host of answers that we don't really deal with in season one, but we just find out more information to support this first part. And so each one of you gets a hero episode, which I thought was kind of cool the way they designed it that way. Um, and so I think it's kind of interesting in the sense of like, knowing that that's the way that the show was set up, what was your favorite, you know, I would say sort of like backstory moment or something that you learned about your character or another character leading into that? Like, what are your favorite moments from these? I would say like the backstory leading into it. And um, I guess, Sophia, I'll start with you. My, okay. Um... Something I really liked in my episode uh, yeah, leading up, like your character backstory, backstory, yeah, because I loved and then, every and time And then the happened. way, I liked the way it was linked to what was happening on the island, um, you know, because the girls were making fun of her, and then they lost her, and they're looking for her, and she's not there on the island, you know, and you think maybe she's dead, and then it's going to, so I like the way that it plays with that, um, with that concept, um, and uh, I also like how uh, it, 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 it builds the, the suspense of, because I, I think everyone going into it is like, okay, I'm going to either hate or love this character by the end of this episode. Mm. Um, and so then you kind of, yeah, you, you never know. And then you are like, oh, okay, no, she's actually good. So. Oh. Good. All right, Sarah, what about you? What did you like from any of the hero moments? Because one of the things I liked in, in all of those sort of vignettes was seeing the characters just as much as they are on the island in less stressful scenarios. Like mm -hmm. the essence of who they are is always going to show up, whether they're in a catastrophe or just dealing with the daily things of their lives. So Sarah, yeah, talk about your, like what you found about your character in that episode. Um, well, you got to see in Leah's backstory, you got to see sort of two little chapters. Um, this was post breakup in episode six of uh, season one and just seeing it was just really a, a cool adventure to, to track where this girl is at um, in these different moments that you know all of these these backstories are an exploration of the trauma that these girls went through um, that brought them to the island what got Gretchen interested in them why they, they are these perfect test subjects um, and then the island is a further exploration of that when another traumatic event hits like what are the things that they're thinking about that they're holding on to even while they're trying to survive um I really enjoyed charting the relationship that Leah has with her friend Ian mm. um, you know that's her like, closest ally um her confidant before she gains these relationships on the island and um understanding where there was friction in that relationship um uh especially as she's dealing with in you know when she's in the aftermath of this relationship with jeff uh or in the fallout of that um so i think it, especially since leah is exploring um the relationships with the girls understanding that there was another um seeing how she comparing that to her relationship with Ian because that's really the closest uh example that we have of friendship in Leah's life um and also I just love the shout out to Fatten in episode one when she's like walking down the hallway and then just yeah. thinking about uh that relationship versus where they're at at the end of season two um yeah it's, they've come a long way God, that's, that's need yeah that's like an understanding <laughs> of everything else <laughs> um, <laughs> Um, Rain, I, I will say too, with, with all of these characters, I know it, it's difficult to really sort of like examine them in these backstories carefully, but I, I, I think too, there's gotta be moments about that. That was my phone. I'm leaving. Uh, there's gotta be moments in those scripts that you probably circled as an actor to be like, wow, this is, this was, um, a part of this character I didn't know until you first opened that script. Was there a moment like that for you? Um, I'm trying to think. Uh, or later on. I just feel like with so many of these characters, because of the cat and mouse game they played with the story, you guys probably found them through the process of playing them. 
Well, yeah, I think, well, originally, I didn't know Rachel had an eating disorder. Um, that was discovered as we went into season two. Um, and so, I mean, season one, sorry, not season two. Uh, as we went into season one, because we shot the pilot a year before we actually shot the first season. Wow. So it was like a lot of time for them to, you know, more so develop the characters and everything like that. So then when we actually started filming season one, because I was episode two and the pilot had already been shot, I was like first up. Yeah. So it was a lot of like learning about what her journey is as a person. Um, and also it plays into how she is on the island. Um, but yeah, I think, and even in season two, you're kind of trying to track where she is mentally because she's doing a lot of things post-traumatic event that most people wouldn't do after a traumatic event like that so um yeah you're definitely discovering her as you go along even as the person playing her um yeah. i try and get as much insight as i can but like i said amy harris and sarah are very strategic about letting us know different things so that then when we get to the other, this other part we're like oh that's why you didn't tell me that and I'm like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> you know so then you're like, yeah. oh, okay, this all makes sense now. And it, it kind of just ties together in a really, like, really beautiful way. So um, it's really, it is a really rewarding process, though, to kind of go through and learn these characters and become closer with them and um, just see them grow. Yeah. It is so weird seeing the four of you here because, again, I, <laughs> I, I went through this show so quickly that, like, and I now know, I'm familiar with all of your work outside of the show, but, uh, but going into that, that's all I had. And so now I'm just like... Who's, who's getting flint, man? Like, where are pills? Like, this is like, where's a waterfall? Like, I'm like, this is like, I feel like we need to be on a survivor hunt. If I have a you're on the screen. It's so crazy. Because, yeah, it was a very immersive. It, yeah, it's an immersive experience watching yeah. the show. Just watching it, you really do feel like the way it felt, you know, I'm going to age myself. The first time people queued up an episode of Lost, they felt that same thing of like, you feel like you're out there with them just trying to survive. And I think that's, the survival genre, right? Whether it's Castaway to the Wilds and everything in between, I think when people see people going through those moments, they can't help but think, well, where would I be? Uh, which is where we end up in season two in just so many different ways. Um, the show ends up in a place that you didn't think it would be at the beginning of season one. So Sarah, as the comments are screaming at me to tell us more about season two, go ahead and set up a little bit of what we can expect in season two, because it's not just on the island anymore. We can at least say that. The trailer gave that away. I'm not giving anything else away on that. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, uh, season two picks up, like you said, uh, answering a lot of the qu big questions that are hanging over uh, the audience and the characters in season one. Um, obviously there's an addition of the boys, and I think that you know, allows us to experience more of what happened on these islands. You know, you only see so much in season one and season two. If you saw everything, we'd be here for a lot longer than eight episodes. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, there's more um, uh, the all of the characters are um, unraveling more uh, questions. I think mm -hmm. in particular, you know, um, Fatten has some potential realizations. I don't know. Are we talking? Are we really talking? Of, I mean, the show or? just came out on the sixth, so I would say don't go too crazy. But I will tell you, I'm looking at the questions from your fans right now, and they're way worse than anything you were ever going to say. <laughs> as far as just like screaming spoilers in these questions, so <laughs> I think you're doing fine. So okay. Don't, don't worry too hard. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, at the end of the first episode, there's uh, there's a connection between these two islands that happens. Yeah. Um, and I think as as big as the questions were at the end of season one, you're understanding in season two just how big this experiment is, mm. um, just how far Gretchen has been willing to go, and um, the extent of things. How the about extent that? of things, and I think that is true all the way up until the finale, um, and leaves us with an even bigger question mark hanging over our heads that that yeah that answer. is what i felt watching it because i only got through season one and one and a half of season two because i have a job and it was already a <laughs> problem uh but i was like after season one season two episode one i was like are they literally gonna put us with an entire new set of questions that are gonna be just as frustrating for this whole thing and i'm glad to see that you're confirming that i was right <laughs> <laughs> like 
Yeah, I think you realize just how like in, um, you know, although there are similarities of uh, events that happen, you know, because obviously Gretchen needs to keep a certain amount of the, the control variables in these two different islands. Um, they do all lead, they're, they're all trying to answer the same question that Gretchen has, which is, does a matriarchal society lead to a more prosperous and peaceful society than a patriarchal one? Um, so they're all trying to answer the same question. Uh, it's just two different locations, I think, really in, you know, seven, eight different subjects. Yes. Um, I love to think that conceit proves true but I think her power corrupts absolutely. And I think that's what the show is showing us slowly yes. and surely. Uh, so Both I'm gonna bring sides this can be you. corrupted by power. Yes, exactly. There is no utopia as long mm -hmm. as there is inequality. So, right? Mm -hmm. Anyway, yeah. so we want season two backstories from Babe Ruzzi Dust. And Sophia, I feel like you would be the one to spill the tea. So spill it, girl. Season two backstories? <laughs> spill the tea. We want some, some backstage stories on season two. Give me something fun from, from BTS. Come on. Oh, like? Behind the that? scenes. Yeah, something fun you guys did to maybe break up the monotony. Yeah, I know how movie good. sets or TV sets are. TV, y'all move at a clip. But I have yeah. a feeling even at that, you guys definitely had some downtime where you're doing something. Um, is there Wi-Fi out there? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like some of us, you know, fell in love, got married, um, had kids. No, kids are on the way. <laughs> I was like, wait, what? Um, <laughs> um, no, I wish. I wish that there was more of that. Like, Sarah found someone, but not in the cast. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, here, how about this? You. I'm gonna take. I'm gonna take you off of <laughs> off of the hot seat for ratting out things in, in the in the cone of of TV making silence, and ask you though the dynamic of the boys and having actual interactions with them. How did that change the dynamic, just in general? Because I know that y'all are still like it's not as if y'all are really separate, but like in the show you are, and so it's like interesting this idea of like they're getting closer. <laughs> right. Yeah. So what was that like adding that dynamic probably more in season two? I was nervous and excited at the same time. I knew it was going to be a cool dynamic shift. Um, because I know I figured they would be cool and um, excited at the very least to be there, you know, and that's always nice, especially the second season, because you don't want to be stale and to have people that are like, wow, ooh, ah, and then it sort of like, you know, reminds you what that was like. Um, yeah. And no. then also I was nervous because I wanted them to be good. <gasps> you know, I didn't want them to be terrible and ruin the show. So. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's facts. I appreciate that. You're like, look, we got a good thing going here. <laughs> I was like, I'm glad that we can be friends, but just so you know, if I watch the show and it's terrible, we will no longer be friends. <laughs> So funny. Well, I, I don't know if be in your life. No, they did a good Goodbye. job from what I can see. They did a they're what they're good. They, they did a, a good job. job. I thought they did a fantastic job. Um well then Randall I mean, they had you know they, they had, had to go through it. Also. So Yeah. You know. <laughs> yeah. They already started with the upper hand, but they did a good job. <laughs> <laughs> Love the shade. She's like, they already started winning a little bit, but like they didn't. Well they not. did, yeah. I mean, they're lucky. They're lucky guys. They're lucky gentlemen. Don't get me wrong. Fair. Fair. Um, I'm going to bring this one to you, Rain. What's your favorite episode from season two, if you have one? Just a, uh, you know, a little tease. You don't have to say exactly what happens on these. I have favorite moments in episode one. But mm -hmm. I well, you can tell me one of that one. Yeah. That's a great one to preview, too, since folks can go queue that up on Amazon Prime right now. Uh, well, hi, hi. I think, I, just, <laughs> I mean, I'm not trying to be biased, but I just, I had a great time with those scenes with Sarah in, mm. in episode one. Um, and it was a scene we really got to pour everything into. Mm. And it's always a thrill to be able to do that in acting to be able to pour everything into it and really have a moment that like I mean not necessarily the circumstance but just that a lot of people have where mm. everything just breaks yeah and to be able to portray that I, I it was definitely one of my favorite moments yeah Sarah what was that like for you because the I'm thinking I know it's just there's so many intense things that happen in season one between 
all the characters, but particularly yours. And there's just like a lot of very raw emotions that built up over the entire first season that just pour out in season one. But yeah, what was that like for you filming it, Sarah? Um, yeah, I think, Ren, are you talking about the like explosion in yeah. episode one in season yeah. two? Yeah. yeah, it was very difficult. I mean, like Rain did such an in incredible job conveying that grief and loss and desperation for her sister and like, that was very hard to be on you know the receiving end of and stoke that um you know it's just, just heartbreaking and it was heartbreaking on the day and it's heartbreaking watching it back in the season um it's uh despite having been away from filming for like a year a year yeah it was a year a year you know, going back to that, we actually shot those scenes too, a, a few, like a month or two in, because we went back yeah. to New Zealand to shoot the beach scenes because it was just so, uh, it was I, it, very important that we had had those locations um, to continue to tell that story. And it's really hard to to fake a beach like that. Um, so we got lucky to go back to New Zealand and shoot, shoot on a fee too. Um, but it's sort of daunting to, you try to put yourself back in that situation and that headspace where these girls are at, but I, you know, just the cohesion of the group and everyone understanding the story that we told and left off at, mm -hmm. I think carried through and allowed us all to be in like a same head, the, the same headspace in order to tell the right story. Um, so yeah, when, when, when rain and, and the rest of the cast is giving so much, I think it's easier to sort of put yourself in, in the correct headspace of, of telling this story yeah because um, although all those scenes everybody was giving so much mm. like, from the ones where it was just me and sarah to the ones like and even though it was kind of like a brief moment but the where everybody's holding me down like everybody was acting their butts off in those scenes and you don't and it was cold. always yeah it was <laughs> and it was cold it was <laughs> and, like, everybody just had this like raw emotion of what was happening um and it's not all the time that you get to experience that it's let alone with like seven different people yeah. and we all are pouring everything into the moment so it's just really rewarding as like an actor and someone who loves the craft to just be in that with so many different people and so many talented people i agree also i think this show ruined me for uh shellfish forever <laughs> <laughs> me too like i'm not kidding you <laughs> I saw that scene. I was like, I don't know if I'm ever going to be able to eat an oyster ever again. Like, like legitimately, it really did some stuff to me in that moment. Because I was at first, I was like, yeah, they're going to make it. But I was like, no. And, and the person I was watching it with was like, this is a bad idea. And it made me even more mad that he was like, this is a bad idea. And they made us these, like, fake oysters out of jackfruit. Oh, yeah, and jackfruit. no offense, they were terrible. So bad. I got a stuff. You like them? You like them? Oh, I think about it. And I it makes you want to gag. I no. needed lots of ginger ale. Jackfruit is a great <laughs> uh, meat substitute, but it needs sauce. There's certain things that can live on alone. No Jackfruit flavor. is not one there of them. No <laughs> like as a no as a person flavor. that tried to be January and failed four years in a row before I figured that out, jackfruit. It's not that tea. That's All right, we got to get out of here. You ladies have busy schedules. You got more people to send over to the show. I want to thank you. Thank you all so, so, so very much for taking the time. But Thanks. before you get out of here, besides flooding Amazon Prime to make sure we get Wild Season 3, let folks know what you may have coming out in the near future or where they can find you. And uh, Sophia, I'll start with you. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> No, we nothing. Uncharted, really nothing. See it, the Uncharted though is out in on VOD now. It just came out on VOD. So it is on VOD, out. which I yeah. didn't want to be that girl to just like talk about it, but you, you are awesome and it's awesome. Thank yeah. you. Thank you can you. listen to our episode on Rotten Tomatoes is wrong, where I go hard for it. <laughs> hard for it. <laughs> All right. Not kidding. Yeah, like I'm not just saying it because we're here, but like legitimately, no. I was like, this is some bull crap. I had too much fun with that movie. I had the worst day of my life, and that movie <laughs> turned it around. Seriously, I was like thinking I was gonna hate that movie. Because I was in a bad mood, really? and I went in to watch oh, it, and I was amazing. like, "This is okay. delightful." <laughs> you know what I'm? I'm you know, so some... it is very entertaining. It's very entertaining. Yeah. That's for sure. I I'm gonna watch that. that now because I'm entertained by you, and I feel like that. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> I've peaked, ladies. This is about as good as it gets. So just know it's downhill from here, but I appreciate that. Um, <laughs> Sarah, what about you, ma'am? Where can folks find you and anything you want to shout out? Yeah, I I don't know what the what the next thing will be for me. Um, the universe will hopefully tell me soon. And uh, but I can tell you what I'm watching. I'm really Ooh. enjoying Under the Banner of Heaven. Is that the uh, new Andrew Garfield, movie? right? Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, the, the first three episodes came out. And now it's weekly, which um, frustrated me because I was ready to just binge it. Um, <laughs> yeah. Y'all, you're just shouting Google. out the fact that y'all are uh, an all-season show, too. Be like, you can get us all together. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's a great pick, too, by the way. I haven't seen it, but I've heard it's really good. And he makes, obviously, great choices. So, uh, Ray, what about you, man? Where can folks find you and anything you want to shout out? Yeah, um, there's this movie I filmed in 2020 called Love You Anyway, which uh, I lead in, and it's about mental health awareness. Um, so I'm really excited and hope that that um, comes out soon. It hopefully, it's coming out this year. Um, there's a movie I filmed back in March called Old Dads with Bill Burr, Bobby Cannavale, Bokeem Woodbine, um, and that should be hopefully coming out next year. And then I'm filming something with Apple TV that I can't see right now, but um, it's exciting. So I, yeah, so stay on the social so you guys can get all the info. Your fans are very passionate. I've seen the TikToks now. Like I said, I did. I went. I went deep over this past weekend with the Wild. So I thank you all very much for giving me an introduction to a new show that I really, really dig. So thank you all. You have to click yourself out, but I want to thank you again. And again, folks, uh, the Wild season two is streaming now on Amazon Prime. If you haven't caught up with season one, it's streaming there as well. And we will see you all next time. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. bye. Thank you. All right, you guys all have to close, and as they close themselves out, I will say goodbye. My name is Jacqueline. Yet again, thank you all for watching. We will be back in a few weeks with some more IG Lives. Again, want to thank Cast of the Wilds, Sarah, Sophia, and Rain. Thank you, ladies, and we will see you all next time. Bye-bye.